Star Trek. Oh, I was bad. I'm, I did a bad voice there. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to newbie Star Trek. That's, newbie. That's, newbie, like you're a noob. No, actually, no. There's actually a distinction between noob and newbie, apparently, according what? to video game parlance. Like a noob N zero zero B is like, oh, he's someone who's new but not willing to learn. Whereas a newbie is like a well-established term before video games ever became a thing. And it's just someone who's new, you know. So anyway, welcome back to Newbie Star Trek. I'm Marvin, as always. And this is Dan and Ricardo, as always. Hello, Hello. everybody. Hey, it's Ricardo. <laughs> And this is newbie Star Trek because Ricardo has not seen the entirety of Star Trek: The Next Generation, so no, we are so, forcing him to watch it all with us. Um, mm -hmm. th this is episode nine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, nice. Once we get to eleven, I'm in uncharted territories. Because remember, uh, for the people who were just tuning into this uh, podcast, when we watched the first episode, I accidentally watched the eleventh episode. That's true. Yeah. So once we get there, you'll be like, yeah. now what? Yeah. Oh, now what man. do I do? Oh no! Jump, jump ship, abandon yeah. ship. Well, I've been looking forward to well, that episode actually for a long a thing time. That I, I like that episode. episode. It is a it is a good episode. Um, it's one of the standout episodes of the. I think this episode's a standout, and I think a data lore is also a standout. Just because mm -hmm. both aren't necessarily like the best production wise episodes compared to later episodes, but they are good written like stories and both like, go a long background. way to flesh out characters yeah yeah there's a lot of character development happening mm -hmm. um, flesh in, out in a good we way. should we should have talked about fleshing out in the last episode <laughs> <laughs> uh Riker fleshed out that planet <laughs> or he wanted dick. to but he didn't have enough time hey Wes Wesley blocked his flesh <laughs> yep. yeah dude <laughs> flesh block just sounds so terrible <laughs> dear god <laughs> <laughs> It's Don't like a, flesh block me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to get my that's flesh a, that's, on that's here. A, that's what Ferengi would say. You have dropped <laughs> yeah. my flesh. I'm trying to flesh out this lady and you're just flesh blocking me. <laughs> what is macaroni? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, did not allow me to insert my flesh in this pot. Um, uh, I So the Ferengi are back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So in soon. A, in a better capacity, this is the battle, by the way, everybody, uh, in case you didn't know from the title. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the Frankie are indeed back. They are better in this episode. Um, it's almost like this should are have they? been. They are better to the sum. We start seeing a little more differentiation between characters. Um, like and they're not as big as caricatures. They're not as comically stupid. Um, they're they're just kind of silly. But yeah, the the Fer the Ferengi are back, and it is an interesting episode because we are going more into the way Ferengi actually operate as like a society, in an, and then also be and through that interaction. We're getting more background about Picard and whatnot. But in any case, before we get too far, far deep in, uh, this episode premiered on November 16th of 1987. So, Dan, do you think anything interesting happened around that time? Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, for one, The Running Man, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, debuted at top of the box office, finally Ooh, dethroning that fatal yeah. attraction movie. <laughs> um, that was on top for like eight or nine weeks straight. It was pretty, oh, okay. it was pretty popular, that one. Also, that same week, Judge Anthony Kennedy was nominated to the Supreme Court. Mm. And Wait, that's hmm. actually, they were, were that many nominations? Oh, one failed, right. Judge right. Bork failed, right. Yeah. That's Bork, what happened. Right? Bork got super borked. <laughs> yeah, Bork um, got borked. Yeah, and uh, finally, just because I, I actually can't, couldn't find the actual release date, but um, the infamous Jaws NES title uh, was a release in November, so I'm just tossing that in there because video games. What's What's the just the infamous Jaws NES title? I don't know anything about that. Uh, well, I mean, infamous in terms of like angry video game nerd played it at some point, and you know, oh, said that is, it was a un, like a nonsense hard like yeah you, you you can't make sense of what you're doing. <laughs> That's many NES games back. Then. Well, yeah. <laughs> plus, it was licensed, and I'm pretty sure it was a JLN um title, which uh or LJN. Oh, okay. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot the, the LGN. Deck. LJN. Oh, LJN. Okay. Um, I... They uh, were purveyors of shit. <laughs> 
in the era. Ah, uh, very good. LJN Toys. Okay, that was the company. Okay, interesting. Well, anyway, so the battle was an episode that deals again with the return of the Ferengi, and also Picard going through some shit. Ricardo, I think you saw this episode. What did you think? <clears throat> All right, let's get into it. The Ferengi are back, back at it again with their crazy deals. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off like just as you're getting started, but I just oh want to point out right away. Yeah, I kind of love how like painfully standard aquariums are considered viable future decor. <laughs> like the vi- yes, it opens yes. on a shot of like a library aquarium with mm-hmm. like a butterfly fish in it. It's like, yep. And then there's an, there's an Astrolade right next to it. Well, Picard is very old school. So yeah. that, that, that ties into Picard. Be- like Picard likes to read like physical books. He likes to like, Actually, he likes architect. Actually, are these quarters that it begins in? Because it's not his usual like con- That's consultation. That's actual room. It's not his ready room. It's his like actual room. Yeah, it, but he still like, like he still bedroom? just sits at like a desk. Yeah, he has a desk there too. But is this is office? like his, ac- I, no, this is like his actual court, like his captain's quarters. Like the one, that you're thinking of a lot is his ready room that's connected to the bridge and the ready room is more of like things aren't happening wait uh, i thought the ready room was the meeting room no the that's just the, that, that's just the conference room the ready room is picard's ready room um which is like uh it's a connected directly to the bridge and that's just a place where picard hangs out when he's on the job and he doesn't have to do anything directly in the bridge but you know at any moment he could be needed so he's right there he's um, reading but, fucking old-timey books on astrolades yeah yeah he just hangs out in this kind of a the bar, the interior decorations all over the place. He's got this glass table, but he's got this yeah. aquarium and then he's, he's you shelving think, units. You yeah. think he ever goes to book like the conference room and they're like, God damn it, it's booked by <laughs> by navigation again. Those assholes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good old. I'd say there'd yeah. be way more booking conflicts over the holodeck. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I always was like, how is there only one holodeck? Right. Or, or like just a few of them. I think there's like less than 10. Are, it always are, sounds like there's less, there's fewer than 10. Oh, in terms of, there's actually more than one holodeck? Yeah, because it's like, go to holodeck three. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Oh. I mean, they I would number assumed, them if there wasn't. I guess so. I, ne- I, just, I just never made that connection. I always just thought it was the holodeck. And I was just like. If we combine oh. all our minds together, we'll have as much knowledge as a standard <laughs> Star Trek fan. As one fan of Star Trek, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Sorry, Ricardo. He, he, he's a, no, 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 no. This is this is all leads to this this scene uh, where it opens up on the aquarium. It it uh, it dollies over to uh, Picard, who's holding his head. He's like, "Oh, I got a headache. Got a headache. Got a book. Got a headache. Got a book." Uh, but I'm still <laughs> keep reading. And the doctor comes in, and she's like, "Hey, you sent for me?" And he's like, "Yeah, I don't feel well." And she's like, "What's going on?" And he's like, "I have a headache." And from this conversation, I get that nobody gets headaches anymore in, yeah, in the future. Right. Yeah. Well, like, or colds or anything. They're like, nah, it's all cured. Nobody gets cancer anymore. Like, no. like, uh, in Star Trek four, the journey home bones casually walks by someone in the past who's on a, a hospital bed mm-hmm. and they go like, Oh, I'm dying from cancer. And he goes savages. And then he just waves this little thing in front of him and the cancer has gone. So, Damn. So, so, so this is a future where uh, pretty much every modern ailment that we know now has been fixed. Other, That's, obviously there's future ailments. Remember that episode yeah. where they needed the, the vaccine for whatever the yeah. fuck that was. Yeah. But like yeah. their explanation for as to why they were able to conquer all this stuff implies so many ramifications that, like it feels like they it's overstepping because it's like well, we've the- mapped out the entire brain and we've understood pain and everything about it what it you know how that works yep uh, they, why they definitely dissected any... humans and like really got into the brain. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we do that now. They roll I mean, so, the shit like, out of it. How can you? How can? What excuse do you have for not being able to explain all sorts of things that happen later in the show? Yeah. It might be like they're so like, oh, all of our solutions are given to us by Google that when something out of the Google search happens, they're like, I don't know. Eh, maybe <laughs> just endless message boards of, hey, I have this problem and there's yeah. one answer like, and, it, and the answer is I also have this problem. Anyone have a solution? <laughs> yeah. And then like some other guy it. below, it's like, oh, never mind. I fixed it. Yeah. Don't worry about the it. What'd you do? Uh, solution solved. What'd you do to uh, fix it? Yeah. 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 And and so he's got the headache, and and the doctor's like, "Well, that's fucking weird because we don't have headaches anymore. That's an old timey disease uh, <laughs> or ailment." And and then she's like, "She's like, she's like, I'm gonna scan your your brain with this weird 
sex toy and she puts it on his forehead and he's like oh that's weird all right whatever and then he he he's uh he also there's the voiceover where he's he's logging the captain's log i guess <laughs> and, and he's like he's like we've been waiting for the ferengi they're late as shit they yeah. three days ago they said stand by and like i said it's been three fucking days <laughs> They're getting really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> fucking idiots. Um, <clears throat> so the Ferengi uh, have been making them wait for three days. And we don't know how long old uh, Picard has had this headache. He's had it for a while, I guess, now. Mm-hmm. And then finally, they are the Ferengi are ready to talk. So Riker calls Picard in. Picard shows up and they, they do the old FaceTime. Mm-hmm. And look, looky, look. It's again the Ferengi looking all mm-hmm. crazy. And they're like, hey, uh, yeah, we, um, and this guy, his, this, this dude's name, his name is, um, Damon, Damon Bach, Damon Bach, mm-hmm. Damon Bach. And he's like the Damon leader. being like the, the title, I guess. Title. Yeah. Yeah. Not one of the Wayne's brothers, Damon. He is. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say that? He was promoted from a Marlin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from Marlin. To- all the, f- all the Ferengi ranks are, are, are based on the Wayne's Wayne's. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Marlin, Sean. Oh, man. Damon. When you, when, you, when you join the Ferengi fleet, you saw as a Sean. Yeah. <laughs> the, the highest rank you would achieve is a Keenan. <laughs> Keenan. <laughs> Um, Grand Keenan Bach. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I and believe so, it. so Damon Damon Bach, he's like, hey, what's up? We got something for you. Uh, they're very sketchy. Again, they're oh, very they? stereotypical. <laughs> yeah, they got the again. It reminds me every every we've dealt with these guys before, but they're back with their with their butt foreheads. It looks like, they have, <laughs> it looks like a butt or a, a nippleless chest. <laughs> we can't tell. <clears throat> and they're like, "Hey, we got a mutual problem." And Picard's like, "What are you guys talking about?" And he's like, "Look, it's all hush hush. I got to talk to you in person. Can't talk to you uh, through this thing." Something's weirds going on. I guess talk to you in person. And then Deanna Troy's like, cut this fucker off. Cut this FaceTime. So they, <laughs> they cut it off. And and then she's like, hey, I'm sensing something is very fucking shady going on here. Yeah. It's it's creepy. It's it, 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 I feel like there's danger. And then Picard's like, ah, eh, fuck it. Let's talk to them again. Uh and he's like, all right, let's uh we like the offer. Let's talk on our ship. Uh it'll be safer. Uh you could beam up here. We'll be cool. And mm-hmm. um and so they set up a meeting and then they, the old, old, the uh, Wayne's brothers, they show up <laughs> like right onto the bridge, which seems yeah. like such a like, huge security yeah. concern. And I know. Very unusual. They, I feel Why like not the holodeck. Why not the holodeck? I feel like the transporter room set was like under construction that day or something. And they're like, we can't, we can't use that set right now. We have to just use this, the bridge. Set. Cause that like, is a good point though, Ricardo. Oh, sorry. I cut you off. No, 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 it's just, I just find it really odd. Like, yeah. it, this is, why would they, anyone, especially the Ferengi, because usually a teleportation onto the bridge is a violation. Like, it's, they usually do it when they're, like, being invaded, you know, like when yeah. Q did it, you know. Yeah, was, yeah. So it's, like, usually, like, what the fuck are you doing here? Sort of thing. Yeah. It's really odd. I don't know. But I do like Ricardo's idea of, t- of transporting them into the holodeck and just making <laughs> them participate in whatever simulation you've cooked up for them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, this they is go what's straight like into their Sherl- ship, fuckers. Yeah, they go straight into Sherlock yeah. Holmes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you must they- survive Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> Also, they could just confuse the shit out of them. They're like, yeah. "That's how we're in a ship." It's like, "Nope, we're an old timey dinosaur a- dinosaur age." Yeah. Um, watch Robert out for that Downey Jr. is here. He's gonna do some kung fu on you. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, before they 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 beam up, the uh, Picard is with the doctor, and he's like, ah, "I got this fucking headache. I can't get rid of it." And she's like, "Well, that's weird because we don't get headaches." Again, she explains like the you know we got rid of the common cold. A little little banter where you got find out a little exposition and then she touches him uh hey hey oh. she touches him <laughs> on the forehead with the, with her like little sex toy yeah, and then he's like oh, i feel better now i'm gonna go deal with these ferengi dudes yeah but she and, tells him it's fake it's not real i just yeah whatever i did is not a real thing i basically just gave you like yeah. a lot of advil yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and and he's like oh well eh, fuck it i feel better all right <laughs> and he accepts it and then old wesley shows up with his new uniform that rainbow shirt um it's like a blue shirt but it's got the three stripes of color on top 
and um, he shows up and he's like, hey, crazy things going to happen right now. We're, we're going to get an intruder alert. Uh, mm-hmm. He's like, there's a weird frequency I found. And sure enough, the, the the intruder alert happens. And so he like predict he he set he like was fucking around with like the how was it? The like he was fucking around with the long distance sensors, making mm-hmm. him have a wider range. He was boosting the signal. Yeah. And he, he received like the signal and Picard's like, motherfucker, that's not how you do it. It's like, you haven't been studying anything. If something's going wrong, you, you call in, you don't fucking walk in here. Like old timey fucking the postman yeah. uh, walking in here with, a, with on your horse. You, that's why we have communicators. You could have just called it in. Hey, there's something sketchy going on. We will get an earlier warning. And he, and, and he does directly go, I know this is just an excuse because you wanted to see the Ferengi. So, yeah. yeah. So sit the don't, fuck down. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah. Don't do that. What's just, funny, yeah. uh, what's funny about that though, is that like any other, like in any other episode, like Picard has no problem with someone coming, uh, telling him, Captain, you better come look at this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, we're not going to tell you shit. You, you come here. <laughs> I guess he had just dealt with Wesley in the previous episode where he had to save his life. He's just sick like, of I'm Wesley. Tired of this. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I'm, I, he has no trust in Wesley. You know, that's the big thing. It's just really? Because like everyone else yeah. is just, the rest of his crew. Him. Yeah. The rest of his crew. He's like, well, they're adults. They do their jobs. Mm-hmm. If they tell me I have to go see something in person, I trust them. True. Wesley, he's like, yeah, come he's, on, he's man. Shit. He's he's a criminal in in <laughs> many worlds. <laughs> not just not yeah. just the ship. Many cultures. He's a multi. Have him, he's a multi-dimensional yeah. criminal because the he, other he aliens was, are from a different he, dimension. He was literally in death row. Literally <laughs> in death row. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally the, he's the he's most hardened interplanetary, criminal. <laughs> interdimensional, like magna galactic criminal mastermind. <laughs> yeah, he, this is like a like Don Corleone. We're getting the the, the the this is the this is the Godfather two of Star Trek. We're getting how he became the warlord known as Wesley. <laughs> There's his picture Crusher. at the top of the family. Yeah. yeah. He's Don known Crusher. as the crusher in different yeah. parts of the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, this is this is a good time. I, I did want to talk about this in the beginning of the episode, but this is a good time to talk about it. You know what would have helped old Picard with his headaches? Mm-hmm. The old Star Trek strain of weed. That I <laughs> Star Trek strain of weed, uh, we discussed in the last episode, we had the Romulan. But this one is, is a Star Trek uh, strain. It is a hybrid. It's a 50% sativa, 50% indica. It's based off of the Sensei Star and Trainwreck strains. They made those two strains fuck. And they, oh. what, what came out? Fucking Star Trek strain. <laughs> so uh, anyway, little weed uh, Star Trek uh, info uh, throwing thrown your way. Thank you. Do, do with that what you will. I say it to that. Uh, back Ease. to the episode. But, uh, yeah. If you want to buy Ease, hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> I'll give you a discount code. We both benefit from this. <laughs> um, it's what Picard would want. We both have a beneficial interaction. You get 20 bucks. <laughs> I get 20 bucks. We're happy for it. We get some Star Trek fucking strength and call it a day. Make it so. Um, yeah, make it so. So Picard's <laughs> like, oh, I, I, now I have that headache again. And the international sign of headaches, you touch your temple. You're like, oh. Yep. Ugh. There was a lot of physical acting on this episode uh, <laughs> on this part. Well, because Ferengi are here too. So they're they're always That's twitching true. and moving their hands and yeah. crouching and, and tilting their heads. Yeah, yeah. and so so the, um, they get a they get the the call from the Ferengi. Hey, we're beaming up. Yeah, we're getting beamed up. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and they literally beam them onto the ship. Security be damned. Uh, <laughs> They could have been holding a bomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. set it off right there. And the Ferengi are confused as shit. They they appear on the bridge and they're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's like they're doing their angry gerbil acting. Yeah. It's like, like ah, yeah, what the? <laughs> what well, time. It's, 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 uh, it's penguin. Penguin acting. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, exactly. <laughs> Why did we Ferengi's appear Ferengi's Madagascar. Here? <laughs> and and uh, I was thinking more like like ni- like nineteen like seventies sixties Batman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then so then uh, they appear in the holodeck. They're confused as shit. Like they they've never experienced this before. Like they've never beamed up anywhere. <laughs> like they have the technology for warp drives for everything. Just not not getting warped into any they other have, space. They have their own teleporter. 
system. Well, they even they say seem it confused as, much. as shit. They seem confused as shit. Dude. They're just confused. Frankies yeah. are just always like, what the fuck? What the fuck are we? Fuck, <laughs> Wait, just woke was up. Bach himself also confused? Because we've at least confirmed that Bach has seen their bridge via video communication. Yes, they were all con- well. I'm I'm just looking at the at the image I'm right actually, now. I'm actually playing it back, and yeah, he's 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 just looking around, scoping it he's, out. He's a, he's a he's a little disoriented, yeah. but the, his two yeah. officers are like, what the uh, he's fuck? reacting appropriately. Yeah. But yeah, yeah the yeah. two like uh, the yeah is two. It's like they're not given direction. It said they're just. It's like they're told, okay, Ferengi, go, and they're like, oh, we just teleported, okay. <laughs> Act yeah. how you look. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 uh, Tell and, me that's and, not effective direction. That's true. Oh that's my true. God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In and, the wrong context, that's very bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Ugh. And then he uh, he introduces old Bach. Uh, yeah. He introduces his 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 office her his first officer, mm-hmm. uh, it, which sounds a lot like Kazoo, <laughs> but it's not Kazoo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's got he's got two dudes with him, uh, and he's Kazago got, so like, and Rato. Kazago and Rato. Yeah, yeah. And then and then he says something really funny. He's like. Picard's like, this is my first officer, Riker, and this is, he starts introducing people, you know, like, this is yeah. Data, and of course, uh, you know, this, this, uh, whatever, he, she, he introduces uh, Deanna Troy, and the Ferengi are like, clothed female, yeah, that is very interesting. <laughs> we heard you did this. Oh, gross. We heard you guys put clothes on women and let them talk? That's fucking weird. <laughs> 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 and Riker has this look like, oh man, that's funny as shit. That's a good joke, man. Uh, <laughs> Riker's taking all of it in stride. He's kind of yeah. like smiling about the whole situation and going. He's like, probably remembering <laughs> yeah. the last time. Yeah, yeah. he did best yeah. them quite easily. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then um, the Ferengi are like, oh, a, a droid. How much for the droid? What shall mm. be his price? And. <laughs> And they're like, no. And then Dave's like, this is not Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. You're like, first of all, this droid is not for sale. And then Riker's like, dude, you guys don't want this droid. He's fucking secondhand. He's secondhand merchandise. You don't want that. Uh, You guys want premium shit. This is not the BMW of droids. (laughs) Uh, That's that's another dude. This guy is like a a Hyundai of droids. By the way, Hyundai, (laughs) I love your products. If you want to send me a car. (laughs) <laughs> I was glad they accepted. Now he's the day woo um, of Yes, day woo. <laughs> yes, dude. Yes, yes. Hyundai is a premium product that I love. I, I've owned two Hyundai's in my lifetime, and they <laughs> sell premium products at a premium price. Is Day Woo even Beautiful. around anymore? Did they Daewoo went bankrupt. And if you have a Day Woo, contact me because I'd like to pro- purchase that Day Woo <laughs> as a classic. That one day a Day Woo will be worth money. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't have said that out loud because now you're going to bump the price on me. <laughs> um, but but if will you have it, a Day Woo, will it, it a Day Woo be will. worth like a Saturn? Like Saturns aren't worth money. No, like, no, no. But but Day Woo was such a failure that <laughs> one day you'll be like, man, it's like Gremlins. Like like if you own a Gremlin uh, in good shape, you you have some money in, in your in your in your stock of of Gremlins. <laughs> Uh, or like the hornet, uh, like a, like the hornets are pretty pretty valuable. Yeah, gotcha. Um, gotcha. Anyway, do you guys ever to... read it as "Does anyone else woo"? That was my Reddit thing. I'm sorry. Come on, dude. <laughs> We've derailed this with car talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so um they're like they're like dude what's going on we we got an alarm about this fucking weird spaceship that is sketchy shit that's got a weird frequency that this boy found out and walked the information in here mm-hmm. and he's like well he's like picard uh we got uh hey he's like hey remember that that battle of of maxia the one you were involved in you're the and hero of maxia yeah, and he's like, ah, and I don't remember that shit. I, I I've killed many people. <laughs> 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 Basically, is what he says. Yeah, he, he's, he's like, he's like, oh, that was a long time ago. He's trying to, he's trying to like, like, kind of brush it off. And he's like, play. He's I've play. never heard of it being called the Battle of. For you, yeah. the day Hero. Captain Picard graced your planet. <laughs> yeah, was, was, but for me, it um, was Tuesday. 
Yeah, the, the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And he's like, the Battle of Maxia. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I kind of remember it. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, my ship was, uh, was, um, it was a very dramatic battle. And, you know, I, my sincere regret that, you know, the, the vessel didn't identify itself when, when that happened. And so we, it just attacked us. So we fucked it up. We blew it out of the sky, dude. And I pulled a yeah. cool maneuver. And the Picard um, maneuver. They effed around yeah, and they, found out. Yeah. 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 And then uh, he's like, look, it's not our fault. It was very, and Picard seems like, especially in this episode, he seems like sincere about that. Like, look, look, look I, I don't, like he prides himself in not taking life. Yeah. You know it, I mean? it does weigh on him heavily. Like, yeah. yeah. It's what, it's, it's, a, it's another trait of Picard. I, I like, Cause like Kirk gets into fist fights and shit really often, you know, like he's, he's a yeah. rough and tumble cowboy. Picard is very much like, I would really, really prefer if we could just talk. And yeah. if he does have to get into a confrontation, especially in the shows, in the movies, he'll do it all the time. But in the show, if he has to get into a confrontation, he's like, oh my God, what have we just done? Like it weighs on him really heavily. And even like the Picard maneuver itself he considers it like because Riker when he's talking when he talks to Picard about it, Riker's like that was one of the coolest fucking things I've ever heard. Yeah, man. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. But Picard yeah. is just like, oh, it's not that cool. Like, I actually kind of feel bad about it. Yeah, <laughs> like, and, and and this scene, like Picard's like, look, I I feel bad about it. It was very unfortunate. And then the Frank the Damon Bach, he's like, dude, mistakes happen. And and then Data's like, no, nah, there was no mistake, fucker. Like you guys, <laughs> you guys shot at us, you fuck. Fucking, you got fucked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You 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 wanted to start something and we finished it, you bitches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then uh Lieutenant Yar, she's like, Oh, that that ship's getting closer, dude. And um and then they're like, uh, look, we we have the ship. That is probably the ship that that you thought you lost when you pulled mm-hmm. this maneuver, and we're gonna give it to you. And then one of the, like the is it Yabo? What's his name? The the third guy? <laughs> Yabo. <Yeah, I'm laughs> <laughs> Yabos. Uh, What's his the, name? Uh, well, the other two friends Rata, are Rata, 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 and Rata, Ka- Kazago. Yeah. Yeah. Rata is like Rata is like, and Trivago. Get, yeah, Rata is like <laughs> is. Like, <laughs> Rata is like, yeah, we're gonna give you the ship at a price. Hotel and, then- and Travago. <laughs> <laughs> this episode's definitely going off the we're rails. Fucked. This, this we're podcast fucked, dude. falling apart, dude. Yeah. It's fine. Rata's- we're summarizing. Uh, box <laughs> box like box like I'm, we're gonna give you the ship and then rata's like at a price and, and then box is like at no price we're free which should the raise some like, fucking red flags right there yeah so the two <laughs> the dudes are like they do one of those like double takes where you're like what yeah. very very ugly <laughs> no price yeah. no price and they're like yes no price and then he's like, all right, well, I'll accept it. And then, and then Picard's like, oh, fuck, my headache. Oh, so fucking my head hurts so much. And then Deanna Troy's like, oh, I'm feeling something sketchy is going on. He's like, I felt it too, Captain. Something's weird happening here. Actually, uh, I really I like love this dudes. look that she gives Picard when he mentions his headache for the first time on the bridge. It, like, he, mm-hmm. like, she notices it's like, a oh, fucking what, bitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and, headache? And, <laughs> and then uh, but automatically like look we've uh, we're i don't know how many episodes in we're like nine episodes in uh, we, already we've experienced so much with like uh people being taken over uh being sexed up everyone's uh, got to be in high alert yeah, right no one's like, <laughs> <laughs> we had that fallen the like, core situation where like the, the yeah. ghost was was inhabiting people yeah somebody gets a headache and we don't have headaches anymore i'm gonna be like Motherfucker, you're getting quarantine. Yeah, getting you're quarantine. in quarantine. Yeah, we're, just we're gonna sit everybody, around everybody, everybody, you. We're, yeah, everybody's in get, hazmat suits whenever yeah. they come near you. Everybody, everybody, don't touch Picard. He's got something in his head, <laughs> some sort of parasite. He probably yeah. drank some weird water. Don't touch him. <laughs> uh, we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need medical. We're gonna need a young priest in case he's fucking possessed by that weird <laughs> fucking goblin. We need a. We need a, 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 a young priest, an old priest, a rabbi. We need everybody. <laughs> we need the Avengers Cover of religion. Cover all bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case. <laughs> Bring them in here. The the Avengers of religion. Let's get them in here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and so he's like, um, mm. he's like, hey, look, the battle we're talking about, we have a gift in your honor for the occasion. So we're going to give you this gift. And these two dudes, his first officer and Rata, they're like, fuck, dude, this is not a good deal, dude. You know how much 
we love good deals. We <laughs> love uh, to, I mean, we've established love this money. It's there. <laughs> these guys, this, this race is very written. Very. It's one it's, note. They only have one note. note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just yeah. absurdly very, obsessed with the transactional. The yeah. way they write it's is like the Ferengi are here. What are their motivations? Money, yeah. money. That's it. Um, <laughs> but he's like, look, the vessel's yours. It's coming down here. And, and, but no one ever questions like, well, who's driving it? It's like, no, yeah. it's just, we just, we let it cruise in here. You guys could hop on, check it out. Uh, it's a yeah. gift. And automatically there's a headache going on and there's these dudes who like to make deals and they're going to give us something for free. Something sketchy is going on. I don't want and it. And they keep smiling at you. Like, yeah. The, yeah. C- come on. And then the next shot is, um, his they're they're like behind the the ship is behind the enterprise Mm -hmm. and then they're scanning fucking luke they're like they're like what's wrong with him he's fucking being weird automatically right now again another red flag this guy luke is luke picard is not acting right we've had so many goddamn episodes where he's out of control we uh, (laughs) someone should just knock him over the head and and put him in the (laughs) right away put him in the break until we figure this out yeah yeah ask questions later uh, Riker you know who should be on a possess? hair trigger to decommission the captain. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. always carrying a billy club ready to knock yeah. him out. Just knocks moment. him out and goes, fuck <laughs> it. I'm in control now. I'm the captain now, fucker. <laughs> and and he's like, he's like, looks like having weird nightmares. He smells burning. He's, all the signs of a stroke, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, before this, uh, okay, they, they're okay. The ship's the stargazer. It's his yeah. old ship yes. um, that was involved in this battle of Maxia. And they go into the conference room, and they just he just starts explaining what the Picard maneuver was, which is this here. Your shields were failing, sir. Mm-hmm. I uh, improvised with the enemy vessel coming in for the kill. I ordered a sensor bearing, and when it came into the return arc. You performed what Starfleet textbooks now refer to as the Picard Maneuver. Well, I did what any good helmsman would have done. I dropped into high warp, stopped right off the enemy vessel's bow, fired with everything I had. And blowing into maximum warp speed, you appeared for an instant to be in two places at once. And our attacker fired on the wrong one. I did what any good helmsman would have done. You did it first, sir. Oh, it was a save our skins maneuver. We were finished on fire. We had to abandon ship. We limped through space in shuttlecraft for weeks before we were picked up. Yeah, so it's not a nice memory for Picard. Because like, so like Riker looks up to him like he's such a cool guy. And it's partially probably why Riker wanted to go on the Enterprise so that he, because I think he kind of- Yeah, they seem to be implying that. Like he really, really looks up to Picard for like that, for this sort like of that. thing, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then it's interesting that that uh, Picard is the one who's like, "This is actually it was an awful time," you know. Then, then they eventually will teleport. Uh, teleport. They'll they'll uh, Picard will trans- transport onto the Stargazer, right, and they'll start going through yeah. stuff. <clears throat> they go in and like, <clears throat> excuse me. You have um, Data and uh, Riker, Yara, Worf. He's like, ah, nothing sketchy here. Everything's all cool. Uh, I cleared it. And then uh, the doctor's like, "Are you are you okay?" And he's and he's like, eh, "I'm fine. No worries. I I got the headaches gone basically." And so um, Picard goes into his like old quarters and he he's he's looking through his shit. And then there's this weird like orb, and he like he's like, "Oh, he gets like paralyzed in pain." And uh, you start seeing that old Bach is controlling this orb on his ship. Like, yeah, it's like a a set of orbs. And the 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 more like uh, Bach fucks with it, the more it affects. Picard. Nobody notices the orb, yeah. right? Though it's gigantic, it's yeah. huge and, and, and glowing. And, and might as well have like a raccoon tail on it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. and it's huge, and it's in his chest. It's in his hope chest, uh, Picard's hope chest. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's glowing. But then, like when when he has a, a fit, he like closes it shut. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, oh, I don't know, where am I? Who am I? <laughs> and and they're like cal- like Dr. Crusher's like, calm down, I'm gonna take you get you the fuck out of here. And they're like, hey, can you bring my shit to my quarters? Yeah, he goes, but, but my like, things. <laughs> yeah. Worf, Worf doesn't go like, hey, um, we just gotta double check this shit. There's always sketchy shit happening. Yeah, on no the one ship. no one yeah. checks anything. Just no. bring it straight into yeah. it. It could be a bomb in there yeah. again. Also, he could they could be bringing in illegal fruit. Like literally, <laughs> we cross state lines and they're like, Hey, you you guys have any fruit with you? No, no, Man, we don't. Cool. This is okay. a single triple in there they're fucked yeah they, you know, this like they, whole, they gotta yeah they, this whole thing is just like a testament to how uh, not thorough their searches are for like yeah. 
problems in and like in in, yeah. cur- in our current times as we as we live and breathe right now again you can't go into a different state without somebody asking you are you bringing in some weird fruits from another state <laughs> if you take a flight somewhere you got to eat all your fruits and vegetables <laughs> before you got you land yeah uh and but here ah fuck it bring in the, your hope chest with all your shit that's has all this space dust on it god yeah. knows what's in it your old this old magazines. derelict yeah old old timey old timey stargazer per- porn would, would it be procedure to be like hey this this old ship is actually the scene of a war or like a space battle yeah wouldn't you want to bring it back for documentation and yeah. like document yeah. everything first for evidence and he's before- he's like no I, I i bring bring my hope just to my course yeah when i when i evacuated i left my favorite novels in here yeah yeah back. yeah <laughs> don't mind don't mind the 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 fleshlight uh, in there my, my old <laughs> I mean, a joke but i'll bet that's exactly the sort of thing he wanted to reclaim yeah, yeah yeah it's almost all almost certainly like novels and some photo albums he's he actually is quite into photo albums you think it's old-timey own. like like painted porn <laughs> some it's sort like of hipster Harry. shit yeah yeah he's like my Probably records full of vinyl records <laughs> <laughs> my records, my Beatles album. <laughs> I say this is someone who collects vital records. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. too. We yeah, all do. We all do. Yeah, um, but we we know at least that that it's very hipsterish. Sure, yeah. we accept. We it. Picard's the type of guy who buys the vinyl just to hang up the artwork. He yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bitch ass Picard. <laughs> um, so so he's like he's like uh, he's like oh god, I'm so tired and we got this fucking headache, and he goes to sit down. He's like, hey, it was like going back home. It feel it felt great. Old old phantoms. Like he he turns into like old Picard so fast. <laughs> <laughs> like he's never like this. He's he's always got a skip and a step. And he's wistful. He yeah, becomes wistful. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah. oh god, I I wish I was dead. I'm gonna go lay down. So tired. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I died on this ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maxia, take me. And uh, and uh, he goes to lay down. I don't know what part the of the bed that- looks. So uncomfortable. Yeah, the bed. yeah. that's that's it, the is captain's bed? bed. No yeah. way, no way. Yeah, he's got this fucking crazy pillow that's clearly just a pillow off of it's the just sofa. A, just a gray stick of butter. <laughs> it's like the backrest from a cheap IKEA sofa. That's his pillow. You know what and would be more comfortable is a sweet, sweet purple mattress. Purple.com. <laughs> oh, if God. you want a good night's sleep. You go ahead and no, go no, to no, purple.com and get, get <laughs> Casper. Sorry. I, 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 fuck it. I, I already had pur- purple up. I'm sorry, dude. We're, we're going full steam on purple. Uh, purple, you, Casper, you guys fight it out. Yeah, Let's yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Casper. <laughs> uh, all right so if he had a purple mattress he would yeah. be he would be in heaven dude <laughs> sleeping resting his his headache would be would be gone but no he's on a regular old nasty ass fucking mattress anyway like a hospital blanket <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a cot <laughs> it's just a cot yeah. <laughs> what do you think you think what what year is this oh like, i don't know i think it's <laughs> technically 2080 something okay so 2080 something you think there's always arguments on the bridge like half the bridge is like it's too fucking cold in here and half the bridge is like it's too fucking hot in here <laughs> or you think like they figured out like the optimal temperature at which like work is efficient and people don't bitch about it all day <laughs> i bet you they've got probably got crazy localized temperature you so? technology yeah. you know yeah, yeah they probably that, like, have really advanced thermostats yeah. like 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 that that they kind of so like you know how you have the little the little emblem on your chest the communicator thing yeah you think like that just tracks your you're like oh they're like okay Riker likes it a little cooler so wherever he goes we're gonna kind of like concentrate more like m- more that's cold. very possible I mean like remember that episode where um the, the the last outpost where like they're like all oh, the life support systems are off but like it, it still looks fine yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like well, the temperature's fine yeah okay, it's, guys, it's because uh, it's it, it's because like they're the temperatures they were so used to being at the perfect temperature that as soon as it becomes slightly off they're all like holy shit oh my god we're all dying it's just like 60 degrees you know yeah hum- humans do that all the time uh i also ah. want to uh very briefly correct what i just said about the year it took place in 23 uh 2364 okay yeah, yeah that Maybe makes I'll, sense i'll be cooler if it was 69 but whatever um <laughs> especially the last episode um <laughs> but 
but <laughs> but uh <clears throat> so you got you got picard who's sleeping on that uncomfortable fucking mattress plus it's a small bed what if he has company if you know what i mean uh <laughs> it he can't do anything on there there's nothing to be done there but anyway so he's like hey picard's taking a nap and Riker and data are like are are talking and they're like data's like dude Riker, there's something sketchy going on and he's like what do you mean he's like i was looking through the logs on the star star gazer mm-hmm. star razor gazer stargaze star gazer. Gazer. Yeah. gazer yeah yeah and it seems like he's like I, I looked up all the logs and it seems like it contains a very different story than what we've been told by history and by picard and Riker's like what the fuck are you talking about data he's like <clears throat> in fact like He's like, he basically shot like unarmed ship that posed no threat to us, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and he's like, he's like, there's data's like, there's fucking proof. It's in his own fucking voice, dude. You don't question <laughs> me. I'm a goddamn fucking droid that you almost sold to the Ferengi. <laughs> See, right and, there, they should have arrested Wesley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Riker should have turned around and was like, where the fuck is Wesley? Where the fuck is Wesley, dude? He's fucking around with that voice changer again. <laughs> Um and uh, the Enterprise is still towing the. the I wish, yeah, I do wish they they had like brought precedent of like, well, a fucking child did this before. What makes you think it can't yeah. be done? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Although, exactly. to, to to Riker's credit, he does immediately go, "This is a forgery." Yeah, like, like, this cause, can't cause, be right. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. mostly based on Riker's like belief in Picard. Like Riker is like in love with Picard. Like he really For looks sure, up dude. to him and yeah. like. No, really wants a good, to like, take care of him. Yeah, there's a big and, old like, dollop of hero worship in here. You yeah. think you think uh, Riker doesn't know his real, his real dad, and he's just projecting this <laughs> like, oh, this, this is my new dad now. Well, Riker has a, I, I, if I remember correctly, he has surprisingly little backstory. We do so meet his I, dad though. Oh, do we? I don't even remember that. There's when is that? Uh, Debbie dad? I think it might be season two. There's a hilarious sequence in there when we get there. Wow, I don't remember that at all. They butcher so. a Japanese phrase so bad. That's good. That's good. That's that's very on brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so Riker goes to Picard and he's like, dude, uh, th- your voice is on record. I don't believe it. And then Picard, to his credit, he's like, well, I could have mistake, mis- mistaken something for the like, weapons and I might have fired without, you know. He's confused at this point. So he's, yeah. like, he's trying to figure out what did I really do? I don't even know anymore. And yeah. he says, even in even if I didn't do anything, even if you know it's a forgery, there's still a procedure you have to go through. So like, you yeah. gotta you gotta go through and file the file the paperwork. Yeah, basically. yeah. File the goddamn report, man. But exonerate me before word reaches yeah. back to us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they have the, they put the time limit of yeah. two days. It takes one day for it to reach them and one re- day for it to come back. So we got a whole day. We got two whole days to fix fix what's going on. And then Riker's like, "Cool, cool, I'll do that." And he goes to his quarters, sends the old. The old secure channel thing. He's like, all right, I'm going to go do that. Cool. And Picard looks like he's fucking dying at this, yeah. this point. He's like, oh, God, I'm so fucking tired. I'm so sleepy. My head hurts. He, <laughs> he, he, he looks like he got the flu. Um, yeah. And he keeps rubbing the side of his head like something's wrong, man. And no one suspects the fucking hope chest. The one yeah. thing that it, it, it is, no one goes like, hey, what is different? Okay, Picard started. No one does like no one uses like basic logic to be like, okay, like Riker should be like. Okay, we've been here three days. The Frankie made us wait three days. And that's that's when he started feeling headaches. Let me figure this fucking out. But no, they're like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's a weird thing that's happening. There's no there's no semblance of just Nothing. logical yeah. thinking at all. Yeah, they're no, just not no. trying to they, figure they, anything out, really. What could it be? They, they, they're basically, their argument over and over again is, well, headache shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, it's like... They, they yeah. just keep denying that it should be happening. <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, Riker calls... Uh, I think the first officer and he's like, and the first officer is like, Hey, Bach just told me about this thing. Fucking sketchy, dude. I think, I think, uh, I think your captain's a fucking dick, dude. He, he <laughs> fired an unarmed ship and he killed a bunch of people, dude. And he's like, he's like, it sounds sketchy to me. And Riker's like, dude, first officer to first officer. What the fuck do you know? This sounds sketchy. This feels sketchy. Your, your, your friend is like being weird. Your, I mean, your, your captain is being weird mm-hmm. and, and, uh, Rata or whatever. I, I don't know. I can't tell Trivago. by just the face. Trivago, Trivago, <laughs> Dr. Trivago, Dr. Trivago is like, like, look, I can't, I can't say anything, man. Like, like he's my captain. Yeah. yeah he's my captain. He's my daemon. Oh, captain, my captain. I can't, he's I my way in that dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, dude, I don't, I don't like, I don't think kindly you insulted me. I would never give up my captain. He's my baby. And I refuse to give you anything. I'm insulted. And he hangs out with him. He's like, fuck you. And then, uh, 
doctor's back with Picard and Picard's like, just kind of like, oh, I don't know. Did I do this? Did I kill a bunch of innocent people? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's really torn. He's got the headache. He doesn't feel good. It and, weighs heavily on him. Yeah, yes. yeah. And the doctor, again, the third time examining him or fourth time, really. And she's again, she's got the weird thing to his head. And he's like, there's these weird frequencies that I'm getting that he's that he's like getting that she's getting readings from that are mm-hmm. that are like she can't figure out. Like there are some weird like frequencies. Yeah, like they're low are, level intensity yeah. transmission. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's like, she's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to put you to sleep. And then she, she lays him down, puts on, uh, she lays him down on yeah. that crazy bed. Yeah. And she puts on that weird sheet on him that looks very, very rough. Yeah. The, the it's very uncomfortable looking. Really low on that thing. Um, One thing that, about the way Crusher, because she, she treats him like three or four times in this episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. And every time it's not a very doctorly procedure. She just no. like, just, just does stuff to him. Mm-hmm. Like usually a doctor will be like, okay, this inj- I'm going to give you an injection now. Yeah. It's going to, this is a sedative to help you sleep. It's or, very hey, Star I'm Trek though to just like, you know, <laughs> go about your business and hastily do things to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, he's like, like I'm curing looking you diff- right now. <laughs> yeah. He's just looking in a different direction and she just injects him in the neck <laughs> with yeah. like this yeah. thing. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, like she, she's like, I lied to you. Dead, dead did nothing. It's on your head. Like she's horrible bedside manner. She's a deadbeat bomb. Um, no points for her on this episode. And then uh, old Picard's like, oh, where, where was I? Who am I? And he's, ha- he's having this like weird like flashback crisis where he's like thinking of all these things that might have gone wrong that he what he did. He's like, am I going crazy? What's going on? He's getting very emotional. Um, and he sees the he sees all of his old uh, his crew. Yeah, on the ship in his dreams. He's like, ghost. it smells the nightmare. Yeah, he's like one of them's named Vigo. Burning. Yeah, Vigo Mortensen in there. And and, <laughs> and, and, and the doctor's voice. like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna give you a shot. It's gonna make you go to sleep." And he's like, "I don't want to go to sleep. Freddy's gonna get me. I mean, my <laughs> dreams, my dreams are gonna get me." <laughs> and so he goes to lay down. She covers him with that weird, th- weird sheet that looks very uncomfortable. And then the weird <laughs> and, gray and, things uh, on his eyes. I know. Yeah, what are, what are those things? I think it's to monitor him. It's I not his eyes. She, it's right above his eyebrows. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think I think it's to just to monitor his brain waves or something. Because later, yeah. of course, Wesley will casually yeah. walk in and 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 uh, and, <laughs> and so so you he goes back to Bach and he's he's a uh, uh, old Damon Bach and he's like he's fucking with that orb again. He's like messing with it. He's like he's like an EDM like DJ with that orb. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh whole Picard's like having night sweats. He's all hot. His neck's all sweaty and shit. Mm-hmm. And and he's just twisting and turning and having nightmares. You have that crazy dramatic lighting on his eyes. Yeah. And and it's it's the nightmare of him. The ship's on fire. He smells the fire. And his his people, he's giving like orders, and they're like he, he's seeing his old crew. And then he he comes he, all of a sudden he's fucking fine. He's normal. He's back yeah. to normal. He wakes up and he's like I'm fine. And the doctor comes in to to report this this thing that she found in his brain, and she's like surprised to see that that Picard just sitting there like nothing happened. And he's mm. and Picard's like everybody out. I need to talk to Riker. Uh, everybody else, go about your fucking business, dude. <laughs> and at this point, people should say, dude, he was literally whining like a baby that he fucking had a headache. Something also, wrong. two episodes ago, he just had a thing where he was like, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> he yeah. just had that episode. But everyone's like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. He gets and he gets like possessed or mind control all the time. A lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and and he's like, Dr. Crusher, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get out of here. I need to talk to Riker. And she's like, well, I'm going to leave, but under protest, sir. Uh, <laughs> As if that means shit. Yeah. And Riker should be like, remember the Remember, remember the two episodes ago, we literally had this problem. I should listen to her. I should listen to the, the, the I mean, granted, she's a Debbie mom and she's a witch doctor, uh, <laughs> but, but, but still let's listen to her. She's been right some of the time. Yeah. And, and then Picard's like, dude, don't pull the Stargazer anymore because they're pulling it with the tractor beam. It's like, we're wasting too much energy. And Riker's like, why? Why would we let go of it? He's like, he's like, don't you? Didn't you learn anything in fucking school, you idiot? <laughs> we're, we're trying to con- conserve energy. Um, the power beam sucking up too much energy. Let's let it loose, and it's just yeah. gonna just gonna coast on by. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I guess I guess you're the captain. You know, <laughs> do what you fucking say. And he goes, and he, he's like, all right, I'm gonna let go of the ship. 
And then he leaves, and Picard's got a weird, maniacal look to his eyes. So they <laughs> let go of the tractor beam. And then um, Beverly Crusher's like looking at these brainwaves, and he's like, there's something sketchy going on. I can't figure it out. And then the Deanna, Deanna Troy's like, I'm puzzled, too. I don't know what's going on. I'm sensing some <laughs> weird thoughts. I'm, he, she's sensing like two sets of thoughts. Like she's getting two different sets of brainwaves. Basically, it's like that happened feelings. before. <laughs> yeah, remember that happened before when he got possessed. <laughs> Let's fucking arrest this guy until we figure it out. But no. And then Wesley casually shows up and he's like, "Yeah, what's going on over here, ladies?" Oh my um, god, he's such a douchebag in this scene. Oh, he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, such yeah. a douchebag. Oh, man. Yeah. But what a hero! I, I have the, I yep. have the scene brought up because this is kind of an infamous scene for Wesley. Uh, Will Wheaton actually says this. Is, he believes this is the moment all of the audience turned on Wesley because he thinks this is kind of what characterized Wesley as the shit kid who knows everything. Oh, definitely. Does this have something to do with Captain Picard? Yes, ma'am. If this is what you're talking about here. I don't know much about brain scans, but I glanced at these when you were studying them. <laughs> and I noticed that these patterns are the same as those picked up from the low intensity transmissions from the Ferengi ship. I went back and checked and they're exactly the same. What kind of transmissions? I don't know. Engineering has nothing like it on record. Let's get to the captain. No, they might be affecting the captain to Riker. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. What a jackass. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. Oh, you, you uh, cut out, you cut out the part where he scoffs and goes, adults. Yeah. 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 Like, that's yeah. the but part that really, like, such a, such a new little, like, it's It's a weird combination of, of uncomfortableness is happening at once. One, he stares them walking away, and he's checking out their asses as they walk away. Even, Second, yeah, yeah. he goes, you're welcome, ladies, as if, like, you know, they owe him something. Yeah. <laughs> Third, he goes like a kid, huh, adults. So it's like, what is the the feeling here? Is it just he's just shitty or I don't know. I don't know who wrote that scene. Like, I'm willing to take yeah. it most benevolently as like he is just, you know, being being bratty about not being acknowledged for his contribution to this problem. Like, I'm willing yeah, to but, believe that that's how they intended to write this. But it's but still or, but, yeah, a shitty just characterization. A it was just the construction of the line, you're welcome, ladies. Makes yeah, it yeah. seem like. <laughs> I, or, or the I other mean, I can register that, that like, just as smarmy, not creepy. Uh, yeah, the way he does it though. <laughs> he does it. People. He's checking while, out. While checking butt. out their ass. I mean, they're yeah, walking yeah. away. They walk. Where is he gonna look? Yeah, at their shoes. <laughs> Come on, Marvin. <laughs> um. So, so then, um, Deanna De Troy and Doctor Crusher uh, show up to the bridge to talk to to Riker, and they're like, they're like, hey, uh, we we think. By the way, they don't give Wesley any credit for this. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, they're <laughs> like, hey, him. he's rest it's, Captain's resting in his quarters, but after ordering these these uh these things uh these brainwave scans we discovered that and deanna troy's like what did, what did he say but they don't they never say like oh wesley found this thing he thinks uh there's some some sketchy things going on with his brainwaves and this low intensity uh like transmission that we keep that he keeps talking about babbling about uh that's coming from the ferengi vessel and mm -hmm. and the record's like who, who who are you guys talking about he's like oh my son my son the transmission he found and it's the same one that that's that we found in the the captain's brain. And he's like, "Hey, let's close the transporter room." And he's like, "Ah, new information. Captain's fucking gone. He <laughs> does this. He's not on the ship anymore." Yeah. And uh, Picard's uh, back on the star stargazer. He he's in there. He's kind of like being. It's like mind control that's happening. Really, like it's taken a while, but but that's what it's revealed to be. And old uh, old uh, Damon Waynes is in there, <laughs> and and he's got the other orb, and he's like, "Yes, I'm collecting on an old debt." And you you we get to we we get a bunch of information from this scene, and it's revealed that that Damon Bach's son was the guy who was cap uh, he was the captain of the 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 ship that Picard shot down in that battle of maxia mm -hmm. and this has all been a revenge plot by this Ferengi. really really this, convoluted revenge yeah by this <laughs> by this rogue fucking ferengi guy That's and just so him. He, yeah and he's he's basically engineered this plan where he's going to get picard to kind of reenact the moment 
of that that previous battle and shoot upon the Enterprise, thus killing a bunch of people on the Enterprise, and it, it being done in Picard's hands and probably getting him prosecuted as a war criminal for like shooting his own ship. I mean, it's an interesting plan, but it's very convoluted and it just makes yeah, no I mean, sense. It's very melodramatic. And there's a lot of points yeah. of failure, possible failure. Oh, yeah. Like, you yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Hey, man, it um, was killed out. Just, Even though you went up to them and, you know, and, and grinned in their face and said, here, have this ship for free. Even though you slaughtered my people and I'm calling you out in front of everyone, but still take it for free. Oh, just yeah, shoot yeah. him. Just shoot him. Just, yeah. The moment he got on board, he should have yeah, shot nah, him. man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not poetic enough. You have to make him destroy his yeah. crew. Yeah. <laughs> Two. And then and then they finally figure out like, uh, maybe that strange shit's happening because of that fucking hope chest that Picard brought on board. Yeah. And they find Worf the, realizes they, he fucked up. Yeah. Worf is like, yeah. I oh, brought it into oh. his room. <laughs> he oh, runs God. Away. He Fuck. runs off. And he goes, <laughs> I thought it was just his sex toys, but it turns out it's a mind control thing. <laughs> and, it, was, it was a very large sex toy. I just thought he was very. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just a <laughs> sex was, orb. We all had it one. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's how he made love, like Demolition Man. Um, <laughs> and the wild mambo. <laughs> <laughs> hunk of chunka uh, and uh and so so they're like yeah this orbs transmitting this weird fucking frequency it's making picard all wonky mm-hmm. uh let me contact the ferengi vessel so by this time the damon bach has already fucking skedaddled out of the fucking stargazer mm-hmm. and and uh they they contact the the first officer of the ferengi ship records like hey uh there's something sketchy going on it seems like uh like your your captain is doing some sketchy shit dude he put this orb and he's i feel like he's mind controlling him oh some sort of possession before that uh like they find the orb right and then they yeah. bring it to the bridge mm-hmm. and the jordy is just holding it on the bridge <laughs> this like really sinister looking <laughs> pulsating red orb like this it's really elaborate they, bring it, they don't they don't like quarantine it in a lab no. No, they don't like go. This could explode. Yeah. Is moment. this is this is this a new? They bring it nope. straight to the captain's yeah. bridge. Yeah, to the helm and go. What is and, this? Hey, and Trilago, like Jordy's just tell hold- us what this is. <laughs> and Jordy just holds it like a basketball, and he's just kind of scanning it with his eyes as he's turning it around. Well, if anyone should and, be uh, scanning with his eyes, it's Jordy. I know, but it's just like. <laughs> just, just hand it to Jordy. It's fine. This, yeah, this this episode definitely feels like they had no access. They they had access just to Picard's quarters, to the Stargazer set, and to the helm, and that's the, the to the bridge. Yeah. That feels like that's the only sets they had access to. And then they were just like, maybe. All right, that's all we can really really scrounge up here. Let's yeah. just make this work. And that seems and, like what's going on. And and then so so uh, Riker's talking to the first officer K- Kazoo or whatever his name is, <laughs> and he's like, Kazoo, you motherfucker, do you know what's up with this fucking orb, dude? And he's like, I have no idea. Plus, I would never give up my captain, captain, oh captain, never give him up. And he's like, never gonna give you up. Um, and, <laughs> and 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 Riker's holding it in his hand. And he's like, do you know what this fucking is? And it could be a bomb. It could be anything. But by the way, it's controlling Picard's thoughts. So why is Riker holding it so close to his fucking <laughs> face? I don't know. Um, Can he just turn he, it off? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> or or call, just they like, call it what? a thought maker, don't they? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, he, and 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 then Kazoo is like, dude. Dude, that's an illegal device, man. If your captain has that, then he's in big trouble. And he's like, no, you fuck. You guys put this here. Don't try to blame shift it on me, dude. And then they try to contact Picard and Picard's like losing it. He's He thinks, again, this plot, this crazy convoluted plot is working. Picard thinks he's back in his old ship and he thinks he, he he's basically reenacting that battle again. And old uh, Riker's like, fuck, dude, he's going to try to shoot. He's going to pull the the uh, the Picard maneuver and he's going to shoot us out of the fucking sky yeah. or the or space. And he's all, how do we how do we deflect that? data and data's like now nah, we can't we're fucked <laughs> <laughs> never been and, done and yeah never been done dude never never have has been done never will be done my friend and then picard's over there imagining like there's the the bridge is filling up with smoke and he's having these weird like fucking vietnam flashbacks and he's like fuck dude he's he's got like a bunch of ptsd and he's like mm. uh, he's barking orders to people who aren't there but he's really doing all the action mm-hmm. of all his crew and he's like setting up for the for the picard maneuver 
And then Deanna's like, dude, I sense a lot of anger in the captain. He's fucking pissed as shit, dude. I think he's gonna <laughs> shoot. I think he's gonna shoot us. He's reenacting the Battle of Maxia. I think. I think it's it's gonna be bad for us. And Riker's like, oh fuck, dude. We we gotta protect ourselves against this maneuver. He's gonna fuck us, dude. And Data is like, I don't know, dude. We're fucked. This is never gonna be done. And then Riker thinks up of he's thinking of a way to 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 counter the maneuver. And and then old Kazoo shows up and Kazago and he's like he's like oh, I have some information for you, First Officer Riker. And, and then Riker's like, Not now Kazoo, you piece of shit. We're in the middle. We're gonna die, dude. And you're over here trying to make a <laughs> deal with me. And he's like he's like, look, I don't want to be involved in what's happening, but um, it's because it's clearly like Federation matters. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be blacklisted. And Picard's like, fine, fine, we're out, dude. Just hang up the <laughs> hang up the goddamn phone, you idiot. And then Kazago's like dude bt dubs bt dubs by the way my friend uh, you should know that damon bach is no longer in command of this vessel and and he's all <laughs> this is the funniest line he's like he's like the reason he's not in command anymore is uh he's like I- i'm in command now is because he was engaging in unprofitable ventures <laughs> that's why he's <laughs> we've relieved him his duty because he fucked, he gave us a bad deal dude yeah yeah <laughs> not because he's got this mind controlling device or anything nope not the problem that's but that's so very weird. ferengi that is yeah, yeah. The, the heart of what the ferengi he's, are like he's like he fucked up a deal he lost his money so fuck him he's out <laughs> i'm in i'm the captain now you talk to me i'm in charge and uh that captain fuck him <laughs> he quickly changed his tune first of all he was very yeah. loyal all of a sudden didn't see a good deal oh fucking well it's been adding up the for, for since the yeah, beginning because he was just so. like why did you give him that ship yeah and then he's my captain's acting weird and then a thought maker shows up and they're like okay something's weird and yeah. ferengi they're not just traitorous to you know to humans they're traitorous to they're, they're themselves as well yeah, so yeah. He, he's willing he's willing to mutiny they're they're willing to mutiny yeah, they're just much awful more people. <laughs> just yeah. awful awful people <laughs> <laughs> and and so um old picard does the maneuver boom and they counter with like by like basically yeah well data go at f- data at first said there is no counter yeah and then well, Riker just says then make R- one then yeah Riker says yeah. they'll make one up and then data goes okay oh i got one <laughs> <laughs> no problem you didn't say to make one up dude yeah i was just going i off love the, the effect of the the picard maneuver by the way because it, according to the timeline the stargazer should have existed around the time of the original series enterprise right Mm -hmm. and the original series enterprise had a very different type of warp effect than the current enterprise does where it's stars streaming um the original uh enterprise had the effect of the the starship leaves behind a trail of like rainbow lines right Mm -hmm. so that's what the that's what the stargazer does when it does the picard maneuver it does the exact same warp effect with the rainbow lines and i thought that's a really fun cool detail that Sort of implies that, oh, we're not just updating special effects. Like canonically, Starship Warp used to look different back in the day. It's really, it's a fun detail. I like that a lot. It's fun. That is good. I, I didn't know yeah. about that, but had I noticed, I would have appreciated it. It's why it looks so like different. Like it has this, like a very bombastic effect. And the, for the for TNG, they they toned it down quite a bit. So. Um. <clears throat> And so, so, um, Luke's like, uh, how did this maneuver not work? Cause they, they counter the maneuver, they f- like freeze him. <clears throat> and, uh, and he's like, oh God, this maneuver didn't work. It should work. I just thought of it right now. And, um, and then Riker comes on the, the old FaceTime and he's like, dude, it's Riker, dude. You got to remember me. I'm your first officer. I'm your Look number one, man. Orb. Yeah. I'm your number one. Dude. <laughs> it's very romantic when he goes, it's me. You're number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your number one bitch. Uh, you, it's a sphere. It's it's horrible. It's, it's controlling your thoughts. Get rid of it. Yeah. And then he's like, Riker's like, destroy you, bitch. And then Picard's like, oh, he starts figuring out like, Bach, trick me. That that shitty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that when he, he made a deal too good to be true that he was fucking me. And then slowly fucking Picard takes out his phaser and he's like, all right, I'm going to remote control this shit and blow it up. And <laughs> he finally... Is, 
sets his phaser to destroy whatever level it is, and it explodes. Boom! And it sends him flying. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sends a stunt double. It, it sends a stunt guy in a bad wig flying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, with TV and slow motion, up and he's like, yeah, yeah, "Yeah, dude." And then he's like, "Oh, the sphere's been destroyed." And he's like, "He's like, Bach, where where the fuck is Bach, dude? I'm gonna kill that bastard." And and then Riker's like, "Ah, uh, he's been relieved of command. He pulled a shady deal." So and then Picard's like, "Oh, there 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 never is money in revenge or." however he paraphrased profit and revenge profit and revenge yeah yeah Yeah. and and they're like oh look at us we learned a lesson (laughs) by the end of this i actually like the that 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 last yeah that thesis statement so i actually pulled it so here captain are you all right where am i number one aboard the stargazer sir the sphere you destroyed it's been controlling your buck controlling your buck where is buck Removed from command, sir, and placed under guard for his act of personal vengeance. Seems there was no profit in it. In revenge, there never is. Nice. Let the dead rest. And the past. Remain the past. And in Riker's head, he's like, oh, damn, he's so cool. So cool. Cool. I'm so glad I'm his home, first commander. <laughs> I'm his number one man. God, what a oh, line. So, oh. Yeah. God, I have to record that playback later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to definitely save that in the logs. Um, and then and then uh, Picard beams back to the ship, and that's the end of the episode. They learned yeah. a lesson. Uh, again, never trust Picard because he's easily influenced <laughs> by shit. Also, another thing we learned is that Ferengi women are always naked. Yeah, always walking around naked. They mentioned that in the first time the Ferengi showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There, there's nothing new we learned about the Ferengi. No, <laughs> they no. remain well, static. Well, the only thing we learned is that they they will fucking. They will. T- they're very capable break of down your, infighting. Yeah, that's what yeah, we learn about in this time. They're they're and not. They'll a take your rank away. They'll take yeah. your rank away right away if you if you make a, a bad going deal. going down from a daemon to a. They shaman. follow their absurd yeah. code of profit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I love. I really uh, of the first season episodes. This is a, one of my favorites, just because um, it's very background character development heavy for Picard. I also like uh, the director of this is Rob Bowman. Uh, Rob Bowman did a lot of the early important episodes of star trek like so he did where no one has gone before right that was actually his his first job directing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for tng then he does this one then he does data lore you know he does a lot of like really important ones right mm-hmm. also david bowman i knew his name would sound familiar he directed the x-files movie the first one. Oh, rob rob bowman yeah oh okay he directed oh that. He directed- right because he because he became a producer on the x-files i remember that now yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, then he so- did reign of fire with matt mm-hmm. mcconaughey yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah 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 so he's a uh, he's you know he, he put in the work one thing i, I really like that he did is that um uh when when they first transport uh to the stargazer they go straight to a steady cam, which has never been done in the show before. So it's got this like really interesting feeling because TV back then TV setups were very like static and like, you know, on sticks, it's very safe. Right. Mm-hmm. But then they go straight to steady cam for that. And you got this immediate feeling of it's kind of uncomfortable and uneasy here. And it's an interesting choice. Someone was actually thinking about cinematography inquiry <laughs> on sticks. Oh yeah, uh, on six on a tripod uh, on a tripod, yeah, because uh, it's usually just the easiest way to light is to know what your that y- your camera remains static and you just you know either pan left to right or tilt up and down. There's your free film school yeah. lesson, guys. <laughs> and you know the fir- the first season of Star Trek TNG in general is actually lit more dramatically, if I remember correctly. It's more dramatically lit than the rest of the series. The rest of the series, the lighting is a lot more like even. Um, and like it's just like let's just they eventually just went let's just turn on all the lights all the time so we don't have to keep doing setups Mm -hmm. but i think that first season they were doing more like deliberate setups per shot um as as time went on they were like we don't got time and then they fired their gaffer (laughs) yeah but you know that that, this is a personal favorite of mine just because i i like i love the idea of the picard maneuver it's a really cool idea i also love picard's characterization as i think this is the first time he's like kind of wistful and sad and like kind of it's like you know, the most self-doubt i think we've seen him go through yeah and and like i love that 
Riker actually respects him for that, you know, and, you know, it, like, cause you all, you always got the sense that Riker looked up to Picard, you know, and sometimes you're like, Oh no, some of it's because he's first officer. So he's, you know, very much just being playing the role of first officer. But this episode, you get the feeling that it's because he just genuinely admires the career of Picard and he's trying to follow in his footsteps. And, you know, it's an interesting idea. Like, imagine Kirk being like following in the he's like, I wanted to follow in the footsteps of like a captain. Right. That's kind of what Riker is doing. And I and I I like it. It's a it's a good characterization. It's a it's a fun uh, and, and kind of important chapter in Picard's history. Like the, the, the Stargazer stuff, you know, comes back and, you know, it's a uh, it's it's, it's where he had met Beverly Crusher's husband and all that, right? I mean, I think the, this strongly implies that that was the event. He died, you know. They don't mention it in the show. Oh, you know what? I didn't really put that together, but I guess you're right. Yeah, like they don't directly mention it in the episode, but that's it's implied that that's the event that occurred. Hmm. So, right, because that was about nine you know, years ago. Wesley would have been born already and yeah, just a there's, kid. There's, yeah, because yeah. he brought the body back and Wesley saw it. So, right. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's implied that there's, that's where that lore came from. But that was the battle. Uh, one of the better episodes of the first season, I would say. Ricardo, what did you think? Having, um, I liked it. Um, but it did get me that like, the, it, it's like, oh, here we go again. He's possessed <laughs> again and no one's yeah, going to say in anything. In the context of watching all of these in yeah. order, it's very much like, again, he's possessed again sort of feeling, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was literally only two episodes away from like yeah, when yeah. we just had this problem. So I, I, maybe it's just because I'm watching them like this. It, it I'm wa Well, technically they would have aired every week, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're watching so, it so, about so someone the keeping up. We're walking, we're, we're watching at the same rate as we yeah. would at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so actually now that I, I stand by my statement, it is very weird. Yeah. Stand um, by your I, statement, man. Stand I, strong. I don't, I don't, uh, if, if I'm, I like the previous episode a lot better. Um, oh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Also, cause like it, it, when anything that deals with like existence and like, why are we worshiping this stupid thing? Um, uh, I'm on board with questioning shit like that. It just, again, it. What I like about the series is also is that there's a little bit of everything for everybody. Like if you like more things about aliens and there's a thing for you, if you are more like, if you fall more into the category of like, well, I'm more into like the existential type of episodes, then there's something for you. That oh yeah. I like that yeah. about the series. And that's what I lean towards more like the existential shit. Yeah. And um, there's also goofy shit and there's yep, like stuff yep. where you'll eventually, once we get to more holodeck stuff, it'll be stuff like, this is just a wacky historical adventure you know they're gonna have stuff yeah, like that we too. just it's want gonna an happen to do a western <laughs> yeah, yeah literally like literally we want to write a western or we want to write a 30s game noir yeah that's yeah, one she... of my favorites uh, when they... <laughs> we'll get there um, but yes yeah. Yeah. So I um I would give it out of ten uh and what is it ten Starfleet ten stargazers stargazers yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, out of ten stargazers I would give it um uh, I like the last episode better so I can't give it a better score than seven and a half I'll give it a seven all right though all right. yeah uh, seven and a half it's about the same okay. uh, I I just preferred the last episode better you know, you know I respect that Dan what do you think uh, I think this lands in that seven seven and a half range for me okay okay um i i am biased uh this is um one of those episodes i would catch on syndication a lot so i actually i'm gonna give it an 8.5 almost a nine Ooh. uh because i just i just personally like the episode a lot um and the and the ideas that are brought up in the episode because I just I just like Picard's lore, uh, his backstory and stuff. So uh, and, and like the episode does it in a way where it's not just like explaining what's going on. It's like integrated into plot and it's actually a part of the story. So what I do appreciate I, I about like it, it is that it, like it deconstructs a legend a little bit. Yeah. It's like, hey, well, OK, uh, first off, this is probably the first episode in which Picard is kind of held up on that pedestal, like to this extent. Um, yeah, it, it, you get more of an idea of why Picard got to captain the enterprise like he's this is just one event in part of a longer career right that because that was nine years ago right right so he uh, potentially has had a, a long career of really cool things like this and it's 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 like a mini the man who shot liberty balance sort of thing because it's like uh he's sort of 
like idolized for this event, but he himself doesn't really think it was that big a deal, you know? It's No, yeah, it's like it's, it's a, a very nice relatable bit of like it's almost like imposter syndrome where you like the person who did it doesn't think that much of it and yeah. you know, they just threw their hands up and submitted to everyone else's interpretation of it. And it's like, well, if you ask me, like I just mm-hmm. did what I had to and that's it. I kind of wish there was a scene where Picard and Riker had a talk and R- Riker was like gushing over it and Picard was kind of just like, you don't get it, Riker. Like th- for me, this is an incredibly traumatic event. And like, I know this is something that like, you idolize me for or think it's really cool, but I kind of don't want you to view it that way. I want you to view it as just another event that happened. And we just barely survived. And I wish I wish they had some sort of talk like that, like they do in the Man Shot Liberty Valance, where it's like explaining it, you know, and that, that would have been cool. I mean, Riker wouldn't have gone, you know, when the truth becomes legend, print the legend he wouldn't have said that or anything. But that would have been it would have been fun to, to, to explore that more, the more of Riker's kind of hero worship of Picard and where that goes. But as it stood, it was a Frankie revenge story. <laughs> and that's kind of where it landed. So, right. Anyway. The battle, uh, that was a, a kind of a, a fun lark into the backstory of Picard. The next episode is kind of a wacky one. Uh, it's hide in Q. Remember Q? Q's Ooh, back. In uh, pog he'll... form. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so that'll be an interesting one because when Q first arrived, he was there to tor- torment Picard, right? Mm-hmm. This episode, when he comes back, he's there to torment Riker. So it'll be like oh. a different character's take on how they handle Q. And uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. So anyway, uh, if you guys have been enjoying the podcast, you can find more episodes of the podcast at newbiestartrek.com. That's N-E-W-B-I-E Star Trek dot com. And, uh, you know, if you've been liking what we're doing, we have, uh, you know, we have an entry in Apple Podcasts or, you know, anywhere else you can find podcasts. And, uh, you know, if you could give us a, a bit of a rating, that'd be fun. Uh, that would help our our metrics a lot, and then, you know, and then you know, get help other people find our podcast a bit more. There's quite a few Star Trek podcasts out there, so yeah, so do uh, it already. <laughs> so yeah, uh, just uh, you know, help us out a bit. That would be really appreciated. Or oh. you know, just <laughs> or just you know, just keep listening. That's also good. Uh, also, no, you can't listen having- unless you help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll die uh <laughs> no we'll come uh, for you oh no 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 i am threatening we'll everyone die. listening right now <laughs> <laughs> or you're, you're fired dan <laughs> uh anyway uh also we have another podcast the fugitive frames film podcast uh which is actually the the uh, original podcast uh we were working on Ricardo do you want to give us a little bit of a yeah a fall, if you like our silly banter and you want to hear us talk about movies go on to that podcast listen download it um we talk uh, we there's much less weed and 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 um talk and way way more terms like on sticks yeah <laughs> if you like that type of banter um yeah <laughs> Uh, just movie stuff that we discuss. Check it out. If you if, look, we discuss all types of movies. We yeah. give Netflix lists, recommendations, do, a bunch yeah. of stuff. If you yeah. like that type of uh content, go on there. Download us. Look, if you if you like us at all, you'll <laughs> like that podcast. I feel like. Yeah. Also, if you like us at all, we do have another YouTube channel as well. It's uh, Fugitive Games, uh, which is on YouTube, and you know, it's a Let's Play channel. Uh, coming up, we we're currently in the middle of Max Payne three and a really fun run of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. But also, by the time this episode comes out, we'll have done at least two episodes of Man of Midan. Yeah, Man, Man of Midan. Midan. Yes. Yeah. Mid. Mi- <laughs> Midan. You. You, Ricardo. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, you know Dan. Um, Midan. <laughs> So there will be two episodes of that out, plus uh, probably some uh, some Call of Duty Warzone stuff with our friend Marcel. Uh, Ricardo's Martin Marcel are going around shooting people in yeah, Warzone, dude. which I've never touched. So it's like fun to see them do it because I'm like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, sniping. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I because because shooters I played were more of like Team Fortress Two and stuff, wackier shit. So uh, it's a it's a interesting change of pace for our channel. 
Anyway, uh, next episode is going to be hide and Q. It'll be a fun one because Q is always fun. And uh, Riker versus Q is a very interesting and different dynamic than Picard versus Q. But until next time, everybody take care. This has been Marvin with Dan and Ricardo. I uh, hope you had a great time with us and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. See you guys. Hey, goodbye. Have a good one. Have a good safe flight home. <laughs> Don't pick up any orbs. <laughs> <laughs>